Fran Stiegler and Charlie Brown when a BF-109 spared a stricken B-17. An American B-17 called Ye Old Pub is damaged and alone. Just one engine is running normally, most of the tail section has been destroyed, the tail gunner has been killed, and just three of the aircraft's 11 machine guns are still working. A few hundred yards behind the B-17, Luftwaffe pilot Franz Stiegler has the American bomber in his gun sight. Having already shot down 22 aircraft, the stricken B-17 will be an easy kill to gain the three points he needs to be awarded the Knight's Cross. He's waited more than a year for this moment. But when he gets close enough, Franz Stiegler doesn't shoot. Instead, he carries out an act that will lead to the B-17 captain and the German fighter pilot becoming lifelong friends. But what could possibly have happened to soften the Luftwaffe ace and save the lives of the B-17 crew? It's December 20th, 1943, and a formation of American B-17 bombers is headed towards the German city of Bremen. Second Lieutenant Charlie Brown and his crew are flying their first mission of the war. As the least experienced crew, Charlie's B-17, called Ye Old Pub, has been assigned a position on the outside edge of the formation. It's the most exposed and vulnerable position, sinisterly referred to by experienced airmen as Purple Heart Corner. Even before takeoff, Charlie Brown's mission had started to go wrong. His number 4 engine had malfunctioned, and the engineers hadn't been able to fix the problem in time for takeoff. The chief engineer advises Charlie to keep a close eye on the engine, and to shut it down if there's any problems. Thankfully, so far the engine has been behaving, and Charlie's crew have made it to the start of the bomb run. For 10 minutes, the B-17s must fly in a completely straight line, presenting an easy target for the 250 flat guns that surround Bremen. Through the windows of Ye Old Pub, Charlie Brown stares, mesmerised as flak bursts fill the sky. He watches as the explosions get closer and closer until, almost inevitably, an explosion violently shakes the pub. She shudders as metal shards rip through the aircraft. The explosion rocks the pub's wings and Charlie fights to regain control of the B-17. He manages to hold her straight just long enough for bomb aimer Lieutenant Andy Andrews to release their bomb load. As the bombs fall towards Germany, the formation turns for home and Charlie's crew assess the damage. The bomber's glass nose cone has been shattered, allowing freezing cold air to slam into the exposed nose. Sharp metal shards of flak have also torn through the number 2 engine, forcing Charlie's co-pilot, Pinky, to shut it down in order to stop the engine from catching fire. And now, at the worst possible moment, the number 4 engine, which has so far been behaving, begins to overspeed. Pinky has no choice but to pull back the throttle before the engine is seriously damaged. With the number 2 engine shut down, number 4 on reduced power and freezing cold air slamming into the unprotected nose of the aircraft, Ye Old Pub begins to drop back from the formation. Damaged and alone, Ye Old Pub is a sitting duck for the prowling Luftwaffe fighters. For 10 minutes, the B-17 is attacked by a dozen Messerschmitt 109s and Fock Wolf 190s. The bomber's gunners mount an inspirational defence, shooting down two enemy fighters and eventually scaring the rest away. But the attack has left the already wounded B-17 in a critical condition. The aircraft's electrical, hydraulic and oxygen systems have all been destroyed, forcing Charlie to take the bomber down to low level. The tail of the aircraft has also been badly damaged. Half of the rudder has been destroyed and the left-hand horizontal stabiliser has torn completely off. Worst of all though, the tail gunner's compartment has been shredded by cannon shells, killing Sergeant Hugh Ecky Eckenrode. It would later emerge that Ecky had been saving up the crew's chocolate rations and was planning on giving them to the local children at the base Christmas party that very evening. He was just 23 years old. Almost all of the crew have been wounded. Waste gunner Russian is in a particularly bad way. Hit in the leg by a cannon shell, his leg has almost severed completely from his thigh. With his ball turret guns frozen, Blackie has come up to help Jennings look after Russian. The men are desperately trying to provide pain relief, but the ice-cold air has frozen their morphine sorettes. In the radio room, Sergeant Dick Peschel has taken fragments of a cannon shell in his eye, and even Charlie Brown has been hit in the shoulder by a piece of shrapnel. During the attack, the number 3 engine was hit by a cannon shell, and is now only capable of producing half power. 
just one of the B-17's four engines is working normally. With all of the damage, the B-17 has been left with just 40% of its normal power. And to top things off, due to the freezing cold air and poor lubrication, the guns have frozen. Of the B-17's 11 machine guns, just three are left working. With one engine shut down, two engines seriously damaged, eight guns out of action and a badly wounded crew, things are looking bleak. So much so that Charlie Brown offers his crew the chance to bail out. But the men know that Russian and his critically wounded leg would never survive the jump. Rather than split up, the crew of Ye Old Pub bravely decide to stick together. Meanwhile, Luftwaffe pilot Franz Stiegler was refueling his Messerschmitt's Bf 109 when the stricken B-17 roared over his airfield. Stiegler had already shot down two B-17s that morning and wasted no time in setting off after his third. Unfortunately for the crew of Ye Old Pub, Franz Stiegler was an ace. Having recently returned from North Africa, his rudder is decorated with 22 white bars, one for each enemy aircraft he shot down. With bonus points for shooting down bombers, he has 27 of the 30 points required to be awarded the Knight's Cross. It's not out of loyalty to Hitler that Franz Stiegler wants to win the Knight's Cross. In fact, his family were strongly against Hitler, but he had seen his country destroyed by the Allied bombing campaign. Franz Stiegler, like many Luftwaffe fighter pilots, believed that shooting down Allied aircraft would prevent innocent German women and children from being killed. The Knight's Cross would recognise him saving the lives of his country men, women and children. Deciding to attack the bomber from the rear, as he got nearer, Franz wondered why the tail gunner hadn't opened fire. He flew closer and closer, until to his horror, he sees the remains of Eki's body in the tail gunner's position. He's even close enough to make out the red icicles where the dripping blood had frozen. Staring at the B-17, Franz sees the missing stabiliser and the damaged rudder. Through a hole in the fuselage, he can see Jennings and Blackie as they frantically try to save Russian's life. Franz had seen badly damaged aircraft before, but this B-17 was so badly damaged he can't understand how it's still flying. Staring at the crippled American bomber, Franz Stiegler has a flashback to the African desert. Arriving as a rookie pilot, his commanding officer, Gustav Ruddle, had taught him the mutual respect of the fighter pilot. You celebrate victories, not kills, he told Franz, and if I ever see you shoot at a parachute, I will shoot you down myself. Franz realised that shooting at this bomber would be no different to shooting a parachute, and in that moment, Franz Stiegler's war changed forever. On the B-17's flight deck, Charlie Brown notices something in the corner of his eye. Slowly, his blood runs cold as he sees the big black crosses of Franz Stiegler's Messerschmitt. Charlie's eyes widen as he watches the German pilot frantically pointing to their right-hand side. But still in shock, Charlie doesn't understand what the German pilot wants. Inside the cockpit of the ME-109, Franz Stiegler has desperately been pointing towards Sweden. Being a neutral country, the American crew could get medical help and sit out the rest of the war in a comfortable internment camp. But even if Charlie had understood what Franz Stiegler was pointing at, his commanding officer had forbidden the crews from landing in Sweden. Colonel Preston was old school and didn't believe in taking the easy way out. He told his men, if you can fly long enough to get to Sweden, you can fly long enough to get to England. Realising that the B-17 is determined to return to England, Franz is faced with a dilemma. He knows there's a large anti-aircraft battery on the coast just a few miles ahead. The damaged B-17 will present an easy target and will almost certainly be destroyed. Franz Stiegler decides there's only one thing he can do to save the flying fortress. Positioning himself close to the B-17's wingtip, he holds a tight formation with the American aeroplane and hopes for the best. On the ground, the German anti-aircraft gunners are confused. They know the Luftwaffe have their own B-17s for training and special missions, but this B-17 looks like it's being escorted by the German fighter. Fortunately, the battery commander decides that whatever's happening, he can't shoot down one of his own aircraft, and he orders his men to hold fire. Back on board the stricken B-17, as he heads out to sea, Charlie Brown is only too aware of the incredibly vulnerable position his crew have found themselves. He assumes the German pilot has run out of ammunition, but still doesn't completely trust the Messerschmitt pilot on his wing. Deciding the German pilot has had enough fun, 
Charlie orders Frenchie, the flight engineer, to go to the top turret and point his guns at the 109. But Charlie makes it clear Frenchie is not to open fire. Franz sees the guns turning towards him. Realising he's done all he can to help the American crew, he decides it's time to return home. Before leaving, he flies up to the B-17's cockpit, salutes the American pilots and then turns away. Charlie nurses the B-17 across the North Sea towards England, but with three damaged engines the B-17 continues to lose height and is in danger of hitting the sea before they reach the English coastline. The situation's getting desperate and Charlie orders the crew to grab anything that's not nailed down and throw it overboard. Equipment starts to fly out of the B-17. Pesho parts with his beloved radio sets, whilst the gunners throw their spent ammunition, flak jackets and even machine guns overboard. This makes just enough difference and the B-17 crosses the English coastline at just 250 feet. Charlie lands the pub on the first runway he can find. This would later turn out to be RAF seething in Norfolk. Russian was sent for urgent medical treatment, but thankfully would recover from his leg wound. Eki's body was offloaded, but amazingly, the other nine crew members had survived. After a sleep and a couple of shots of whiskey, Charlie Brown relays his story to the squadron's intelligence officer. Unfortunately, senior Air Force officers were afraid that if the story became common knowledge, bomber crews would start to see the Germans as human beings rather than the enemy. They believed a story about a friendly German fighter pilot would disrupt discipline and morale. Consequently, the incident was immediately classified and the crew were ordered never to discuss the events of the 20th of December. This also meant that Charlie's request for medals for his crew would be denied. In Germany, the Allied bombing campaign was starting to take its toll. The situation was so bad, propaganda minister Joseph Goebbels has nicknamed Allied bomber crews as terror flyers. Franz Stiegler risked a court-martial, or even worse, if he admitted to saving an enemy bomber. He kept his secret for almost 50 years, until one day in 1990, Franz Stiegler opened his copy of Jägerblot, a monthly magazine for ex-German fighter pilots. His heart almost jumped out of his chest when he read a letter from an American bomber captain. The author was looking for the pilot of a Messerschmitt 109 who had escorted a stricken B-17 safely out of Germany. A few months later, and nearly 50 years after their first encounter, the two pilots were reunited. The men described the meeting like being reunited with a long-lost brother. The two airmen remained close friends for the rest of their lives, often attending reunions together to tell their story. Charlie Brown and Franz Stiegler died just a few months apart in 2008. Just before Charlie Brown's death, United States authorities admitted the incident had been incorrectly handled during the war. Each man in Charlie's crew was awarded the Silver Star, and Charlie Brown received the Air Force Cross, an award surpassed only by the Medal of Honor. With nine silver stars and one Air Force Cross, the crew of Ye Old Pub remain one of the most highly decorated bomber crews in history. After December 20th, 1943, Franz Stiegler continued to defend his country men and women from the Allied bombers, but he never again claimed the credit for an aircraft he shot down. Instead, he would credit the kills to his junior pilots who were eager to score victories before the war ended. Consequently, he never won the Knight's Cross but Franz Stiegler himself would often say, I got something better. If you enjoyed this animated war story, please do hit the thumbs up button and share the video with your friends so that this incredible story can reach as many people as possible. And to make sure you can find your way back, subscribe to the channel for more animated war stories.